So we have our array of six numbers, it's an int array, and we come to our first loop. So we're going to expand that. This is the, yep, yeah, down the right path is the exit condition. So down this left path here is actually, yep, yeah, staying in the loop. And if you, so if I hover my mouse over one of the nodes in the loop, it'll actually highlight the edges of the boxes. So you can tell those are the boxes within the loop. So for this, what I'm going to do is say, well, I see this compare here with this variable, local variable, and immediately before the loop, I see this, it gets initialized to zero. That looks like a for loop to me. So let's write this out. For var8, we won't call that var8, we'll call that var i. I equals zero. And here we have jump if greater or equal to six. And that's the exit condition. So it jumps out if it's greater than or equal to six, which means the condition code wise is if I is less than five, we're going to continue through the loop. Um, I added the plus plus because I already know if we go down to the bottom of this loop and take a look, we see our plus plus syntax right there. We don't need loop five. What was that? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. You are absolutely right. See, off by one. It's less than six. We're going to continue. If it's greater than or equal to six, we're going to come out of the loop. Okay. So now within the loop, we see this move i to eax, and we're seeing it here in this array syntax that is being used as the index. We know it's an int array, so yes, that is the size of each of uh, the data types within the array. So eax is just our index or i is our index to the array, and we're comparing it with one. And then based on that compare, if it's less than one, we go boom. So add to this if I'll say int array i less than one, I go boom. Uh, I'll stay consistent with this, okay. All right. And then this next part, move our i and dcx, it's used as a index again. And we're going to say, okay, if interray our i is let me see. Less than or equal to six, I'm going to continue. So that means if it's greater than six, I'm going to go boom. Now we move I, add one, move it to var 40, and we come to our next loop. Or if we expand that, oh, I just collapsed it. If we expand that, now we see it looks like var 40 is our 
inner loop index variable. So I'm going to call that bar j. Oh, j doesn't show up very well. Bar j, I'll do capital. Make it easier to read. Bar j, which starts out as i plus 1. So let's go over to our pseudocode. We're going to do 4 j equals i plus 1. The break condition is going to be compared with 6 and jump out yep, if it is greater than or equal to 6. So if it's yep, less than 6, it will continue. And I already know that at the bottom of this loop is going to be a j++ syntax here. All right, so we're following through this loop. Make sure I have that. Yep. So now we see I gets moved to ECX, J gets moved to EDX. And each of these, you see as I highlight, it shows up over here, and EDX shows up over here. And that's the only difference between this and this, which is indexing into our interay. So what this is doing is it's grabbing interay i and interay j and doing a compare on them, where the comparison starts with interay i. So Let's write this out. We know we have a int here. If int array i, I'm going to do something int array j. So what's that comparison? We're going to jump not zero around the boom, so it'll jump to the zero to boom if they are the same, right? So what this is doing is if they're not equal, it'll jump around the boom. So we'll say if it is equal, it'll boom. Now we're over here, we jump, this is the plus plus syntax, okay, so that's the end of the inner loop, and collapse that, loop six, jump, plus plus, okay, that's even the, the end of the outer loop there. So that was our first two loops. So what does that do? Make sure all the input digits are unique in one digit. Yeah, it makes sure that all of the Input digits are unique. And one secret. And that, um, yeah, and that they are between, inclusive between one and six. So we have six digits one, two, three, four, five, six, not necessarily in that order. All right, so that, so we are here. There we go, it looks like we're initializing i to zero again. Let's unroll this loop or uncollapse that loop. And yep, it looks like we're using i as within this for loop here. What looks like a for loop, so let's create this again. I is going to start out at zero. The condition will be. What's the condition going to be? Um, I is going to zero. I plus two. Greater than or equal to. Yep. Well, I is less than six. 
and we know that at the end we see our plus plus syntax, so we have the, the start of another for loop here. And actually, uh, copy paste. Right. So we have the beginning of our for loop comes in and let's see what do we have here? What's this? What's this list head? Well, that was what we had set up back here to say, oh, I think that points to the head of our linked list. So now we're getting into dealing with wonderful pointer arithmetic. Yay! So that that pointer is moved to edx, edx to var four, and var j gets initialized to one. And then we go into another loop. Um, for those who are used to doing uh, dealing with linked lists, either programming wise. Um, or analysis-wise, what I see here is what I would call a cursor, which is just a, a meaning that's pointing to a location within the linked list, and that's going to get that's going to point to other locations within the linked list as we go through this loop. That's just a feeling that I have right now, so I'm going to call that cursor. So let's see, we have our cursor points to our list head. And we have the beginning of another for loop, it looks like. Let's uncollapse. Oops, I collapsed it. Uncollapse that inner loop and take a look. And it looks like, yep, there is some kind of condition here, but it's a little more complicated. So let's start with the initialization j equals 1. And now, what do we see? What's going on here? One of the folks online want to answer that one? What's happening at position 401511 in this loop? Anyone online? Anyone here in the classroom want to say what's going on there for the condition for the for loop? Let's see. It's moving bar j to edx, moving bar i to ecx. It's taking a look at using bar i as an index into the interray. Let's that value. To bar j. Yep, which is bar j. So if we write this out, I'm going to say, okay, we have interray with var i as the index.
Let's see, assuming K is J. Assuming K is J, then yes, Corey is right. It's while J is less than what is in the integer array at position I. Yeah, it's a little easier to read. And then we have our J plus plus syntax, maybe, at the end. We do have our J plus plus syntax. Okay, so that's the inner for loop here. So now, what is this doing here? I'm going to move the cursor. Ex. Oh, what's that? Well, that looks like it's a structure access. So I'm going to say, okay, T, and it's a my item, and it's going to go. Ah, it's grabbing the next the pointer to the next item, putting that in ECX. What this is doing is it's updating the cursor to point to the next item in the list. So if we come over here, we'll say cursor equals cursor dot next. Or to be more precise, probably use that syntax. For those who don't know, this is C syntax for saying uh, dereference this pointer um, and go to that, um, grab the value at that member. Uh, if cursor weren't a pointer, we can just reference it by that syntax. Okay, and that is all that that inner loop does. So we come back out, and since we were done with that inner loop, let's clean this up by collapsing it. Did we do that? Yeah, I did that previously. So now we're going to say, okay, moving on in the outer loop, we see var i move to edx, our cursor move to eax, var i is being used as a index into Bar 8, or bar 38 rather. Bar 38 then looks like it's some kind of array where maybe it's an int array, although we're seeing the cursor being moved into a position in that array. So let's say it's an array of um, an array of offsets. So let's call that our offset array. So, uh, and we're saying cursor, the cursor, current cursor is being moved into offsets array position I. That is the end of this loop. All right, collapse that. Now we are, I just did that one, yeah. Now we are here. So offsets array, moved into ECX, ECX, moved into list head, list head to EDX, EDX to cursor. So this did, did a bunch of assignment here where we move offsets array to List head and then made cursor the same thing. So we're setting up that. And then we're 
also seeing var i getting initialized to 1 right before a loop. So that's probably going to be our loop variable here. Yep, we see var i in a conditional right here. And this is going to be a, a simpler, at least graphically, loop. We don't have any inner loops in this one. So let's set up the 4, i is 1. All i is, it jumps if it's greater than or equal to 6. So all i is less than 6. And we get our i plus plus. So in here, we have our cursor, our i, our i is being used apparently as an offset into the offsets array, grabbing the value out of that. Here we're staring, seeing ECX, which is our cursor plus 8, so that looks like accessing the structure. Looks like it's doing that again down here. So what is what is this doing right here? So what this is doing, cursor, ri, offsets array, ex, next, basically cursor next, to point to the item in the offsets array. Here's, here's an assignment here, making the cursor point to, or rather the cursor next, point to the item in the offsets array. So that was that. And now here we have cursor to ECX, x minus dot x to EDX, cursor to EDX. So this is updating cursor to point to the next item. Cursor. And now we're at the end of our loop. All right, almost there. So here we have the cursor. Oh, looks like a, a structure access here. My item. We're moving, oh, moving zero to cursor dot next. All right, we can do that. Let's call that null. Move our list head to ECX, ECX to the cursor, so make cursor point to the head of our list again. Var i is zero, oh, and a loop looks like we're gonna use var i in our loop, i is 0, jump greater than or equal to 5, so this time it is less than, maintains in the loop while less than 5, for i equals 0, 5 i plus plus because I already know down here we have our plus plus syntax. I. All right, now, what are we doing here? Let me make sure I close that up. Yeah. Here we have, oh, hold on, let me make sure, see if there, no, no question. Here we have the cursor being moved into EAX. No, oh, structure access. Next. We have the cursor.next move into ECX. 
we have the oh, the cursor again, edx. We're grabbing the oh, this is a my items dot field zero. So grabbing field zero here, ecx. That's where next is a pointer to also a structure of type my items. So I'm going to do T on that and say, okay, you're grabbing field zero of my items next and doing a compare. So what we're doing here is it's doing a comparison on where cursor currently points and the next item in the linked list and jump greater than or equal to. So this is going to jump around the boom if my current item that I'm pointing to in the linked list is greater than or equal to the next item in the linked list. And by item, I mean field zero of the structure in the linked list. So here's, here's how that's going to look in pseudocode. If cursor field zero is less than cursor next field zero because it jumps around it if it's greater than or equal to so it goes to the boom if it's less than And we're still in our loop here. You see down here, oop, looks like there's a structure access. My items. Cursor dot next goes to edx. Edx goes to cursor. This is just saying, okay, now make the cursor point to the next item in the list. And that's the end of our this for loop. All right, that's the end of that loop, and we're at the end. Okay, and that's how you do this phase of that. No, uh, that's how you get the pseudocode that you can then use to try to figure out what's going on. So we have pseudocode. Let's say, so we already said this part here is is doing what? Make sure. Is this one through six in your new loop? One through six. No duplicates. What's this one doing? Populating the offset array. What was that? It says populating the offsets array. Populating the offsets array with what? The addresses and the structures. Incidentally, is that something that the compiler would have put in as an, as an artifact of using pointer math, or is that something we think of the, pro, the author of the program would have actually put in there? Is this something the compiler right, so would have done, or is this this something that the programmer would have done. Right, like normally um, I'm used to just, you know, casually navigating linked lists, mm -hmm. right, in C. Um, but I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is I'm speculating, do we need that offsets array? Um, does the, the compiler say, oh, I need an offsets array to do stuff? Um, this, this is something the programmer would have put in. Okay, what's this for loop doing?
Anyone online? Want to tell us what the oh, wrong one? What this for loop here is doing? So it's it's setting up the linked list so that it points to the um, setting up the linked list so that it is ordered as the numbers that you gave on the command line. So what this does, it populates. This wasn't a, a full description. This is populating the offsets array, but specifically in the order given on, um, given by your input string. So if we take a look at our data, and here, let me put in the comment here, um, order this. If we take a look at the data and we go go up to here we go we take a look at our linked list we see the this numbering here one two three four five six um, those are going to get referenced shortly but right now what they are is it's telling us okay that's the first item second third fourth fifth sixth item in this array. They just happen to, to line up that way. And if you were to say, um, you know, I want two, one, three, four, five, six, it would reorder the array so that two came first and then the two next would point to one and then the one next would point to three and then the three next four and so on. All right, so what is this last one doing? That's what this first command is terminating the end of the list. I want to see what Jared types. I told him I would pick on him for this one. Make sure the linked list items are in order from greatest to least. So what this is doing is checking, okay, is the starting off with our cursor pointing to the head of the list? Is the field zero? at the head of the list, less than field zero of the next item in the list, if so, go boom. So in other words, if it's greater than or equal to the next field, to the field zero of the next item in the list, we'll continue. Update the cursor, point to the next one. So that's exactly what it's doing. It's making sure that the um, linked list is ordered by field zero, which is this. So it, it wants to see the linked list ordered from greatest to least in terms of field zero. So if, we, if it's expecting that, then what are the numbers we want to give on the command line in order to get past phase six? Four, two. Four, two. Six. Six. Three. Three. One. One. Five. Five. All right, let's go 
to. Oh, oh, we are here. Hold on a second. You got that because of the way that it was. You're looking at the offsets in each each struct and how they're linked together. Right now, they're linked just like this. Okay. And what was the question? <laughs> so how is it we got that order? I'm missing the punchline here. So ready? Here is here is the essentially here's the punchline. This is where it says I want to order the linked list. I want to see, or rather, I want to see the linked list ordered where field zero in the first item is greater than or equal to field zero in the next item, and field zero in the next item is greater than or equal to field zero in the next next item. Okay. And what the previous steps did that reordering was we it reordered the linked list based off of what you gave on the command line. Okay. So if you gave one, two, three, four, five, six on the command line, they would be ordered one, two, three, four, five, six. Essentially no change. They would be in this order. Um, and it would go boom because it's not ordered where the largest field zero comes first. What are those values? What are these values? They're just integer values. They're just numbers. So if we go, if we go here. Let me say, okay, what was what was the answer again? Four, two, six, three, one, five. Congratulations, you've defused the bomb. Yay. <laughs> that level was evil. Yes, that level is evil. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> Yes, but not the secret phase. We won't be going into the secret phase. Feel free to do that on your own if you'd like. Uh, I have gone through the secret phase myself. Feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions on it. Uh, but we're going to we're going to move on to other things unless there are any questions on phase six. Are there any questions on phase six?